What's up YouTube? So in this video, we are going to be looking at the subject of a one coat versus a two coat. So yes, on this job here we're on right now, we are working for the RA group and we are plastering one of their garden rooms. There's actually uh, two rooms that we're gonna be tackling today, but for this video, we're gonna be focusing on this room here. Now the plan is that what Louis and I are gonna do is, Louis is gonna apply uh, two coats of plaster in the traditional method and see how it comes out and the timing. And then I am going to apply one coat of plastering and sponging it and then see how that comes out and also see the timings of the two and see if there's much difference in it, see which one is better. But to show you the job that we are on right now, I'll just take you off the tripod so you can see this is the room. So it's pretty standard. Uh, just before anybody asks, because the last time we did a garden room, everyone asked if I was about seven foot tall. No, I am not. I am six foot two. And at its highest point, you can see it's obviously got a slight uh, lean to it. At the highest point, it is 2.2 meters, which is nice because it means we don't need to use a hopper. So what the plan is, is that Louis is going to two coat the uh, reveals, uh, the, uh, the wall with the, roof, the doorway in because um, the reveals need quite a bit of building out and he's also going to do the ceiling as well. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do these three walls here using a one coat method. Now it's very important to remember if you're one coat plastering that you have to sponge. That is really important. It will look horrific if you do not use a sponge float when you're one coating. So that's what we're gonna do. What we're gonna do is we're gonna mix up, we're gonna mix up two and a half bags of plaster. It will be slightly thicker because the important thing when it comes to one coating is you have to be able to apply the thickness of two coats, which is around three millimeters uh, in one pass. So that's what we're gonna do. It will be ever so slightly slipper. It won't be a big deal uh, because we're both getting rid of the plaster. It will go fairly quickly. So we'll use those uh, two and a half bags. Just uh, for those that are interested, it is roughly about 3.5 meters by about two and a half meters, something like that, just over two and a half meters. So that's the size of the room. It's not particularly big. It's quite an easy job. So in this video, we're gonna show you the difference so possibly leave in the comments below your thoughts as to what you think about these two methods being used side by side in the same room at the same time. We hope you enjoy the video. Consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing. So just before we start, there are obviously a few things to remember when it comes to sponge float plastering. Uh, the first one being is that this is not necessarily considered the most desirable form of plastering. So if you are just getting in to plastering, please be aware that you will likely get some flack uh, from perhaps the old guard or the traditional plasterers that thinks this is a disgrace. My honest opinion being, just in the same way with the uh, plumbing world, as they say, using push fit plumbing fittings makes everybody a plumber, or using a sponge float method makes everybody a plasterer. The reality is it makes life an awful lot easier. The next thing to remember when it comes to sponge floating is that you need to mix up your plaster a little thicker, so therefore you will have less time on it. The next thing to remember is that you will not be able to put on as much meterage as you are two coating. The uh, third thing or fourth thing, I don't even know where I'm at right now, to remember is that it is so important when you are sponge floating, you have to really get rid of those sponge marks. You cannot leave any sponge marks left over. It will sharpen the paint. It will look horrendous. Another thing to remember is that really you do want to use a, a sprayer to wet down the plaster. Unfortunately, yet again, I forgot mine, so I'll be using a splash brush a bit later, which is a little bit annoying. And the last thing to remember, as I've already said at the start of the video, is that you are looking to apply the thickness of two coats in one pass. This does take a little bit of practice. If you're struggling with this, certainly if you're new, the easiest way to do this is actually just to apply the plaster on all your areas and then just go straight over it again. Um, hopefully I shouldn't need that. I should be able to pull the three millimeters straight away uh, in one pass. But if you are struggling with the thickness, just go over it 
uh, straight away. So they're just some uh, small things just to, to, to have a think about, just to remember uh, before you start tackling one coat plastering. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix up those two and a half bags right now, and we will catch up when we are applying the plaster. Okay, so the first thing that you have to do when it comes to one coat plastering is that you fill out all of the low areas first. So in this particular case, it'll obviously be all of the tape work. Now, uh, these boards are actually tapered edge, so obviously I'm gonna fill out the tapered edge. And then where the boards are joining here, um, I'll also put a tight coat of plaster over those as well before I start doing my normal laying on. If you're doing any beadwork, you would also fill out the beadwork first as well. So that's what we're gonna do here. So, unfortunately, there is a light <laughs> right in the way. So that's gonna ruin the saturation on the video a little bit, but what we'll do is just go to the tapes, and just very quickly fill them out like so. So you can see plaster is ever so slightly thicker. And then just run all the tape. Doesn't need to be pretty in any way. One thing I did just forget to mention is we'll run a timer on this video. Now currently uh, the camera's been running for about four minutes at the time I just remembered, so we'll need to add four minutes at the end of the video. But if we press start on the camera, uh, on the phone, sorry, and we will see what the timing is at the end of the video. Okay, so now all of the tapes are completely filled out. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna carry on and we're gonna just lay on these three walls nice and thick as we would normally any other set. So we're gonna start that now. Okay, so the walls that are being one coated are now on. We are up to about 23 minutes or so. Um, applying the plaster. So what I'm now gonna do is I'm gonna use uh, my spout, I'm just gonna use the 800, just because it's a bit easier to use. And I'm gonna go around and just flatten, <coughs> just gonna flatten the walls that I've already uh, put on. Okay, so these walls and ceilings are now on. Uh, what I did off camera was I actually flattened the uh, one coated walls again as it's pulled in a little bit, but also uh, flattened Louis' walls and ceilings for him as well. And the time currently is uh, 42 minutes. So uh, these walls now, uh, certainly the walls that are one coated, that is it, there's no more applying of plaster. What we then do is we're just going to wait for this to pull in so it just uh, dries a little bit so the top is just a little bit greasy and then we will be uh, sponge floating that. Lou doing something very similar in that he will be waiting for his plaster to pull in a little bit. Um, again, wait for it to little bit, go a little bit greasy and then he'll be knocking up a little bit extra to lay down that second coat. Theoretically, Louis should pull in a bit faster as Louis should be a little bit thinner, saying that the uh, door wall, uh, the beading, um, the plus where the beading is, is on a little thick, so that might take a little bit extra time. Uh, but the ceiling certainly 
uh, shouldn't take too long to pull in all being well. So what we'll do is we'll actually catch up when one of us is progressing in our set, whether it's been me sponge floating or Louis applying the second coat. So we'll catch up at that point. Okay, so the time on the clock currently is about 56 minutes. So it's around about an hour with the extra time uh, before I started the stopwatch. Now, Louis is at the point where he is mixing up his second coat right now, and these walls are not too far away from a sponge float. If I show you now, you can see if I gently rub my fingers over the wall, you can see it's firmed up, but it's still a little bit slimy. So that is the time, about the right time, to apply the sponge to the wall. So we are going to do that now. Now unfortunately I haven't got my sprayer with me so I'm going to use a splash brush which is not ideal and I'm going to use uh, this rather large 18 inch Rafina sponge. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put water on the wall like so. And then run the sponge. Like so, this sponge is very nice because it makes life a lot quicker. It's a lot easier with this sponge. Why it is that me and Louis are both plastering uh, a relatively small room. We obviously would not normally be doing this, but it is the easiest way to do a comparison against sponge flow versus tube type is to uh, have two plasterers doing two separate methods in the same room. And these garden rooms are pretty easy, so if anything goes terribly wrong, uh, for Louis, I can always step in. Did they ever do it? Sure is. You'll have to excuse Louis. We're both not feeling particularly great at the moment. Unfortunately, we are suffering with winter colds, and I think we would rather be doing anything other than plastering right now. That's yeah, quite it. So, yeah, Louis thinks he's got mad at Louis. Yeah. And there we go. I'm all sponged. And then I'm going to give Louis the beautiful news that Louis loves to hear. Louis gets to look forward to cleaning the sponge. That's Louis's favourite job. He it's really, really He really enjoys it, don't you, Lulu? The luxury is <laughs> You know what they say, why have a dog and bark yourself? Well, you can put the snacks, you can put the second coat on there. <laughs> <coughs> Thank you, Lou, you can clean that sponge. Okay, so, now um, that's been sponged. Now, as I already said, you wouldn't normally be able to flatten it straight away. You'd have to leave it two or three minutes, let the water dissipate off the wall. Because this was done with a splash brush and uh, a sponge, there's not that much water on there and the plaster was a little bit wetter knowing it wasn't going to be applying that much water so I can hit this straight away. So it's a very flat angle and I'm just looking to push those sponge marks back in. Now we're going to, we're going to go over this wall twice with the spatula. So the first one is just to take out the initial sponge marks 
And then we're going to go over it again in about five minutes or so, just to close that faster and push those black bits back into the wall. Don't worry if you don't have a, a spatula or a speed skim, a trowel works just as fine. Uh, this is just faster. So the concept behind using a sponge float is it's almost like you're giving it that second coat by reactivating that top layer of plaster. So you've got the plaster that's touching the board or the substrate, that's pulled in obviously, naturally the plaster touching the paper, naturally that will dry faster. And then the top millimetre or so, because we've re-wetted that, um, that will now be slowing or drying at a slower rate. That's the theory behind it. I'm not any kind of scientist or anything like that, but it's got merit to it, so when it works, so I don't really care. You, uh, you do get a lot of plasterers that go on about the fact that it weakens the bond and blah 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 blah. I'm going to be totally honest with you, that's above my pay grade. I, uh, I certainly don't have a qualification to tell me whether it weakens the, uh, the chemical beyond, beyond it or any rubbish like that. Uh, Louis thinks, because he's got his MVQ, he's a hero, but he still sucks at plastering. Um, the truth of it is, uh, in all the years I've been plastering, I have never had a sponge floated and fail, but I have had a two coat even fail when the bond between the two, um, between the two coats, uh, it wasn't bonded properly because the first coat had gone off too, too quickly. I've never had a painter come back to me and say, that looks terrible. I've never had it in raking light where it looks terrible. The reality is if you know how to sponge rake properly, uh, the finish is almost flawless. So, the plaster is that think it weakens the plaster and bloody bloody blah. By all means show me some kind of evidence, but I've never seen it. Um, so, but there we go. Rant over. So anyway, carry on with sponge plating. Nice, decent pressure. Obviously we're looking to push those sponge marks back in. You know, I was also thinking about it as well. I've had a few plasters say on the channel as well. Um, British gypsum. British gypsum don't recommend using sponge floating or one coating. It says do that on my bag and all that rubbish. Do you know what really makes me laugh about that? I wonder how many of us professional plasterers have used dirty water to make plaster go off faster. I wonder if British Gypsum recommend that. Probably not. I wonder how many of us have put cement in bonding or hardwood to make it go off quicker. I wonder if British Gypsum recommend that. It certainly doesn't say to do that on the bag. Or perhaps using products like Half Time or Extra Time. Does British Gypsum recommend doing that? Does it say that on the bag? I don't think so. The reality is we use all of our experience as plasterers to get the most out of the product we're using. It's just some methods we happen to like and some we don't. Um, and there will always be some that don't like one coat and sponging. Mainly I think because you can do a lot more meterage in a lot less time and earn a lot more money and for some, they don't like that. Also, you are essentially devaluing the quality of the trade by making it easier. But the reality is, if the technique works, who cares? Okay, uh, okay so my walls are now all spattered down. I've actually run the spat over them twice. And the time on the clock is one hour and 17 minutes. And if we were to have a look at the walls, <coughs> uh, 
Meanwhile, Louis is still, there you go, a bit better light. Uh, Louis is still applying the second coat of plaster. So, with regards to my walls, whereabouts roughly would they be in a plastering set in general? Well, currently it would be the equivalent of having its first coat flattened, second coat flattened, and then a closing in pass as well. So really the next stage for my walls is actually a wet trowel, which I probably won't need to look out for another 25 minutes to 30 minutes. So while Louis is working like a Trojan, I'll be sitting around drinking a cup of tea if I wasn't a very nice boss, but I'm actually gonna go and help Louis put this wall on because if Louis is a late finisher, so am I, and it means it takes longer for me to go home. So I'm gonna help Louis put his section on now. Okay, so I am now going to do my first wet trowel. Timing on the clock is about two hours. Probably could hear it a little bit earlier, but Lou was using the trowel I wanted to trowel up with, which is uh, my cement trowel. I did say that I would give a shout out to uh, one of our subs who actually bought uh, one of these trowels um, after we featured it on our channel. Uh, his Instagram page is here. Um, he uh, has literally just bought these, so I hope for Ian that um, the trail, you enjoy the trail as much as we do. But just have a little look at the walls that we are on. So this is after two hours. You can see I can put my hand completely on there and it is dry. Whereas if you have a look at Louis, Louis just flattened his ceiling in. You can see he's just going over it now, just flattening in. A little bit so Louis is probably around half an hour behind mine so we'll put the camera over here so we will do our first wet trowel on the sponge motor wall again using the cement trowel uh, you can Go straight onto a flexible trowel using a sponge flow. Um, it gives a lovely finish, but I quite enjoy using this trowel, so I'm going to use this one. There's too much water. Okay, so these have now had their first wet trowel, and to be perfectly honest with you, 
There's already a shadow and a light and they are coming out. Very, very nice. What I'm going to do now, you can just see here in the corner here, the edges are just, they're just a little bit uh, gappy, so I'm just going to run a twitcher, no water on it, and just, just fill those out a little bit. Plaster's gone really quite firm, so should be able to quite comfortably put some decent pressure on the uh, trowel, the corner trowel, and not worry about leaving any grooves. Something's over here. There we go. I've just filled out. Probably not going to worry about doing the, um, the ceiling line just yet, just purely because at the point where Louis at, he hasn't actually um, he hasn't actually done his wet trowel yet. Timing on the clock is two hours and twenty minutes. <coughs> the reality is, I could actually probably just run a plastic over this in about five minutes. It'd be okay. I'm not going to. I'm actually going to do one more wet trowel with the cement trowel still, and then I'll just leave it. That would be absolutely fine. Uh, certainly a good enough finish um, for what uh, the RA group are looking for. So I say within 20 minutes or so this set will be finished and that means this would be at around about uh, two and a half hours to two hours and 40 minutes. Bear in mind that currently the temperature outside is six degrees. Uh, this is a garden room, there is no heating, it is 6 degrees and you can clearly see from Louis, uh, Louis set has got yet to have its first wet trowel. Louis probably got another hour or so on his, I would have thought, uh, probably needs a wet trowel in the next 5 to 10 minutes, 20 minutes or so later, another wet trowel and then a dry pass in about 10-15 minutes after that. <coughs> so you can see straight away that my set very quickly, the more time goes on by, the faster mine accelerates towards the finish. So we'll carry on rolling and we'll pick up when I do the wet trowel um, and then also when Louis starts doing his wet trowel. Okay, so um, I've just started the wet trowel, started the second wet trowel. Okay, I've just started the second wet trowel. I've done the wall that is uh, behind the camera. I started around about two and a half hours. So I've just got these, <coughs> these next two walls to finish and this wet trowel will be a cross trowel. So you say it's around about two and a half hours and he's just starting his first wet trowel rather than just finishing his first wet trowel to cut off camera. That's a nice aggressive angle. I'm still using that uh, cement trowel from Marshalltown. Uh, what was quite nice is that um, when this is all finished, I'll, I'll show you the wall of the ranking light. And you can see the finish that you can get. You can see the finish you get in the middle of a brand new trowel. So lots of angle. Let's say this will be the final trowel, so once once this one's finished, uh, I won't do it anymore. We will do a wet trowel, uh, a second wet trowel on here for about 20 minutes or so. And then a dry trowel about 15 minutes after. Just 
so uh, we're on the clock. We are up to uh, about two hours and 50 minutes. The only thing that is left for me to do is I'm just going to use uh, one of these brushes. Um, I don't really know what you call them. We call them ticklers. And I'm just going to just brush out the corners. Um, I twitched them on the trouse before, so those are needed again. Um, I'm just going to brush the ceiling line um, where Louis is. I appreciate Louis is going to be going up against that again. It's just to keep mine nice and neat. Just brush those out. As I say it's already filled out, it's already got its shape, so there's no need, no need to, to run the twitcher again. I have run the twitcher on the uh, against the walls that and the ceiling that Louis was doing. So we just run this just to tidy it up. It's quite a handy little brush this. It's quite long. Um, so it's really quite useful, it's a massive thing. So it's really quite useful to uh, when you're doing full height ceilings. So uh, that is it, my set is now completely finished. And I'd say it's coming out around about two hours, 50 minutes or so. I'd say Louis probably got another 40 minutes or so left on his set. So what we're gonna do is we'll catch up at the point where Louis' set's finished and we can just see the difference in timing between the two and also uh, later on this afternoon we've got uh, another room to plaster on the other side of this garden room so uh, towards the end of the day what we'll do is we're going to bring in uh, the light which is just behind the camera this very bright light and shining up against the wall so you can see the finish that I was able to get just one coating and sponging so you can decide whether or not you think it's worthwhile you trying it yourself in your own jobs. Okay so some time has gone on by, we've actually gone into the other room and we've pretty much finished uh, that other set as well. Um, but I thought I'd just catch up really on what happened at the end of this set. Well, um, I stopped the time when Louis was finished and you can see it was on three hours and 34 minutes. So around about three hours and 38 minutes as I started it a little bit uh, late. <coughs> so I can't actually remember exactly what time uh, I finished my set, but I think it was around about 40 minutes to 50 minutes um, after Louis. So the big question then is, how did it come out? Certainly, how did uh, my walls come out? Because at the end of the day, traditional two coat plastering, it's a known uh, quantity. So how did mine come out? Well, if I show you here, I'll take you off the tripod and I'll just do a quick pan around first. This is how it looked. Now, anyone that knows anything about plastering will know uh, that a good sign of some decent plastering is consistent color. Now, admittedly, with sponge floating, you'll nearly always get consistent color, but this has come out very nice. But as promised, I said I'd actually put raking light on the wall so you can see just how good or how rubbish Alex will be is. So Louis is gonna hold the light up side on to the wall. Now, I don't know how great that is coming up. If we have a look a little bit further around, Louis on this one, please. Bear in mind, this is pitch black. But anyway, that really is it. There's the difference between uh, one coat versus two coat. Uh, I'll leave it to, to you to decide whether you think it is any good or not. But in reality, what are the pros and the cons? Well, without a doubt, the biggest difference is the timing. Like I say, uh, these were both put on at the same time, um, in the same room, in the same conditions, and two coating lasted. It took around about 40 to 50 minutes, I think it was, longer to complete and unfortunately as the viewers at home you cannot see properly how the walls came out but they are silky smooth and that as I've already mentioned was using a brand new trowel that new cement trowel from Marshalltown that we're testing out no doubt if I was using my uh, six year old five six year old carbon trowel which is fully broken in possibly the results would have been even better. So one of the big pros being that it is 
a little bit quicker. Certainly as well as if you are a novice, um, it's a bit easier as well. Uh, certainly you'll notice uh, on the walls in the videos that you saw, there's no tiger marking at all. Uh, that is one of the big things that you gain when you sponge float is you don't get any tiger marks and you have very few, if any, misses if you pay attention to taking out those sponge marks properly. So there are definitely some big pros. What's the cons? Well, um, in reality, um, I could have actually probably put this whole room on on my own if I two-coated uh, and used traditional methods. Um, however, doing one coat and sponging, because you're putting it on thick, it takes a little bit longer. You need to mix up more plaster. It doesn't last as long, so it's a lot harder to do much larger meters when you're doing sponge coating. Um, but when the sets are a bit shorter, certainly in the spring through to autumn months, uh, you can actually, uh, if you're quick, get three sets done in a day uh, between eight and four. Uh, it's not really something I tend to do personally. I work hard enough as it is. I don't want to add another set to my day, so two is enough for me. But it is um, a little bit of a plus when it comes to sponge floating. But then again, as I already said, you can get more meterage on with two coating. So anyway, there is a quick video on the difference between one coating and two coating. We hope you found it helpful. Possibly it might provide a bit more information on these two methods as to whether it's something you use in your own work. Thanks for watching. Consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing and we look forward to seeing you on the next one. Thanks again.